Hey everyone, welcome back for the very last time to Rose Stops Buying Stuff. Um, this is my last video of my no buy budget year and my content will be moving on to my 2021 project as of the next video. So this is the last wrap up video and it is my 2020 money diary. <laughs> So I was kind of intending this to be my no buy budget year wrap up but in terms of the no buy part of my year I kind of covered it all in my last video which was my makeup rehab 2020 wrap up and um, because obviously my no buy was also part of my makeup rehab plans um, but rather than kind of talking about that specifically to make up in that video I just talked about my no buy in general. My no buy was successful basically as the TLDR um, and if you want to kind of know more about my struggles and stuff with it um, that's in the last video so I will link that down below and in the cards and whatever and you can go check that out if you've not watched it already but I don't want to just repeat everything. Um, that I said in it for the people who have watched it. So this is going to be more about my budget year. It's my 2020 money diary. I feel like I need to address the fact that I am I'm sitting in the floor. Um, so it's it's a different setup to usual. I feel like I look like a MySpace profile picture from like the 90s. It was MySpace the night, right? Okay, my, MySpace was not the 90s. Let's well, it probably was but I wasn't on it in the 90s because I was you know a child um but yeah I feel like I look like a MySpace profile picture or a Bebo profile picture but a real throwback but basically I've got my computer in front of me and this was just kind of the simplest way that I could set it up so that I could look at the computer whilst talking to the camera so so we're sitting on the floor basically like I, don't, I feel like a child um, but anyway, I hope it's not throwing you too much. Basically, as part of my no buy budget year, I started sharing my money diaries every month, which was, obviously, if you watch my intro video, you know what my money diaries are. Breaking down basically how I spent my money from my budget every single month. I'm not going to go through all of it because I obviously did an intro video for people who are not new to my channel but basically every month for 2020 I gave myself a budget of £250. That went across five categories that I tracked and those were experiences and services, socialising, food on the go, books because books were one of the few exceptions to my no buy. I was allowed to buy books but I had to take them from my budget. I couldn't just buy them freely and taxis. Any budget that I didn't spend in a certain month would roll over to the next month. Obviously, when I went into 2020 and made this plan, um, I did not foresee 2020 panning out the way it did in terms of lockdown and the way that lockdown would impact my ability to spend the money that I was tracking in terms of like, wasn't really getting to the hairdresser, um, certainly wasn't socialising, wasn't getting my nails done, wasn't taking taxis anywhere because I wasn't really going anywhere. So things that I expected to spend money on got very much affected by that and particularly in the second half of the year I got to a point where I was a bit like well what's the point in me filming these videos because my spending is not being informed by me growing or learning how to budget it's literally being informed by government regulations dictating what I can and can't do at the moment um but even though I didn't film the videos I did still fill out my money diaries and I thought I would just do a 2020 wrap up of the whole year's spending in each category, how I feel about it. For the whole year, from January through to December, my spend on experiences and services was £1,508.60. My spending on socialising was £645.41. My food on the go was £408.84 for a year. Books, I spent £301.96 and taxis, I spent £32. Now, as I said in the intro, like, I know for a fact I would have taken more taxis than I did over the year if I had been having a more normal year. Books I might have actually potentially spent less on because I think there was definitely times that I was buying books because it was a bit like, well, I'm not going anywhere, so I'll just I'll just buy books. 
I'm not upset about the amount of money I've spent on books. Like, I love reading, I love books, that's not an issue. Um, but I definitely haven't read all of those books yet and I think, like most people who like books, I have a lot of books that I own that I haven't read yet that I had before this year. I don't know what to say, I don't regret what I've spent on books but I feel like because of the pandemic I probably spent more than I would have planned or intended to spend on books and I probably justified more books than I maybe would have had there been more spending going on in the other categories. In terms of socialising being £645.41, I'm looking at it and that broke down, I spent 137.50 in January, £15 in February, 81.77 in March and then April, May and June I spent nothing at all in that category. July I spent £110, August was 99.98, September was 46.16, October was £17, November was £62 and December was £76. So I spent £645.41 and there was three months of the year that I didn't spend anything. So technically that was spent over nine months. So if I divide that by nine, my average socialising was £70 a month. Now that is probably less than I would usually spend socialising because there was a lot of those months where I saw people like once and um, you know like in November we went into a lockdown halfway through so I, whatever I spent in November which was £62 was spent seeing people because we knew we were going into another lockdown pretty soon. That has really impacted that socialising and you know that generally would have I think been higher had 2020 been a typical year. But I would hope that would have maybe been offset by books being lower. I don't know, I can, again, I said this in my last video, I can only theorise about what might have happened or why or how things might have affected me. Um, I can't kind of know for definite. But I do think, had 2020 not been what it was, socialising would have been up, taxis would have been up, but books might have been a little bit less. Food on the go was £408.84. One of the things that I would say in terms of what I've learned and how that's impacting my 2021 plans because I am going to be budgeting in 2021 again. That is part of next year's project. Um, because I don't, I don't overall feel that I really learned to budget this year because it was so out of my hands how much I was able to do each month that Months where I was under my budget or where I didn't spend in certain categories quite often wasn't really me making a conscious decision about that. It was often that there were regulations or restrictions in place that impacted that. So I am going to be budgeting next year but it is going to be slightly different. The setup is different um, and that's really informed by this year so although I feel like I haven't really mastered the skill of budgeting yet I did I'm still really glad that I did this this year because I feel like I've almost had like a trial run year at it where I've kind of been able to say right this is what's worked this is what hasn't worked and in terms of food on the go the food that I put into that category was any food that I ate alone so food that wasn't part of socialising and wasn't part of like going out for dinner with friends. And that was £408.84 over the year. And I don't, again, I don't know because that includes takeaways that I may not have ordered if we hadn't been in lockdown or we hadn't been unable to go out for food or unable to go meet friends. Like I might have been out with my friends spending that money in socialising rather than spending it on a takeaway to have on my own on a Friday night. So food on the go, I'm hoping the reality of that category next year might be a little bit less. But I also, what I really started tracking food on the go for was because I wanted to cut back on the amount of money that I was spending on food at work. And I am back to work now, I'm back in the office and I've already started picking up work lunches again. But again, it's just that habit that when I did get put on furlough and I did get sent home I didn't stop spending money on food at work because I had learned not to I stopped spending it because I wasn't at work and that's really what I want to cut down on the amount that I'm spending on not so much 
whatever percentage of that food on the go and this is where that category becomes a bit iffy is that whatever was spent there in terms of takeaways or like nice meals I don't regret but what I do want to stop doing is spending so much money on lunch at work so that's informed what I've decided to do in 2021 in terms of tracking my budget and how I track my budget. Then experiences and services. So that took up the majority of my budget. It took up £1,508.60. And mainly that is getting my hair done, getting my nails done and theatre tickets. That is something I'm really, I need to do something about. So I spoke about this last year. As ridiculous as it sounds, prior to doing my budget, I don't think I actually realised how much money I was spending on my hair. It was, if you guys remember, my February money diary, which was before we went into lockdown. My hair cost me £129.50 in February. And that was the first time I've, I'd ever actually taken note of how much money it was costing me to get my hair done. Um, and at one point I was getting my hair done every like three to four weeks. Like I was in a really ridiculously over the top routine of going like the first Saturday of every month. And then if I had like events, I would shift it forward or shift it back kind of thing. So there, there was, do you know what I mean? I look back in that time and I go, how were you affording that? Um, so I, that is something I want to look into next year. Thing is, I've spent all that money this year but there was months that I went without getting my hair done um, or my nails because we were in lockdown and you couldn't go get your hair done so I know for all I've still that's where the majority of my money has gone I still didn't spend as much as I would typically spend in that category but I've already spent more than I want to be spending in that category basically theatre tickets totally happy um, and again, that's kind of informed what I'm doing next year so that beauty services I'm going to track individually rather than lumping them in with experiences and services and that kind of being a catch-all. Because I, I like getting my hair done, I like having my nails done, but not at the cost that I am currently spending. But because 2020 turned out to be what it was, the idea of like going and trying to find a new hairdresser and going to somebody for a one-off seeing if they could do my hair well or not it just really wasn't worth the hassle in terms of I really like my hairdresser I really like the products that they use I'm very very happy with all aspects except how much it costs but I do have some alternative places that I might try in 2021 but it very much is going to be informed by restrictions and you know if it gets to a point particularly in terms of restrictions my hairdresser is city centre and um, so it's within my radius of where you're allowed if you are only supposed to travel a certain kind of you know amount or within your local council area which was part of the restrictions before we went into another proper lockdown you could travel but only within that area and whatever um, and the alternatives are further away because they're outside of the city centre which is why they're cheaper but they're also going to cost me more in terms of travel and um, it's going to be not a financial cost but a time cost to make the journey there and back in a way that my current salon is a very convenient location as well as liking you know the products and the person and whatever and um, the location's also great and that's what I think I'm going to have to compromise on if I want to make the financial saving so I feel like that is still something in 2021 that I want to look into as an alternative for getting my hair done it's not going to be the easiest thing to do under the restrictions to start experimenting with different hairdressers. I also am quite wary of going somewhere else and then having to like crawl back with my tail between my legs to my regular hairdresser. Um, but we'll see. I did during 2020 buy 
the clean all nice and easy root touch up at one point um it was during it was during a time when the shops were open but hairdressers weren't so i can't even think what tier that would have been for whatever reason i couldn't get to the hairdresser but i could buy although i maybe i feel like i bought it in boots though i don't feel like i bought it in the supermarket so it must have been when like shops would open because i wouldn't have been in boots in town unless i'd been in town um to although maybe i bought it on my way home from work or something anyway i did buy hair dye at one point and did my roots myself and i am considering going forward with that it's not quite the right shade of red and they only do one red as far as i can tell in that nice and easy root touch up range um but it was easy to use and it was the wrong shade of red for me but uh, maybe i can't decide if it looked better than having my own roots coming in or not so yeah i don't think it was that noticeable unless you were right up close at it so what i might do is keep going to my hairdresser but try and only go once every like two and a half to three months and use the nice and easy or whatever in between that might be a way of like staying where i want to stay spending less because that is what i definitely need this is the category that's the problem basically um is if 2020's taught me anything it's that i'm spending too much on beauty services because over the course of the year so the way i've done my spreadsheet is that there's the opening budget every month was 250 pounds plus whatever the excess was from the last month's unused budget now there were months i opened with a really big budget but it got spent pretty much by the end of December I opened December with a budget of £486.72 I spent £383.53 so my budget unused at the end of the year was £103.19 bearing in mind the likes of like April which we were in lockdown for my entire budget spend in April was £46.57 in May it was £111.96 and in June it was £75.44 so those were months when I literally saved like over £200 in April, over half my budget in May, like £175 in June like that I was underspending by in those months because of lockdown. So in theory I should have ended the year if I was budgeting monthly, I should have ended the year with that money, like a crude kind of thing, but I spent it because it did roll over, so it was available to spend, and the thing is, I had the money to spend, like it's not like not spending my budget was a way that I was trying to save money or anything kind of thing, like the budget was worked out so that I could spend it without it impacting on me saving for other things that you know we're not coming from my budget so it's not it's not a problem that the budget was spent at all but how much of the budget was spent looking at how little was spent in certain areas that would have been more had the pandemic not happened it shows me that I still like I have a lot of work to do basically in terms of budgeting managing my money and figuring out like how much I'm comfortable spending on different things and my hair is definitely definitely one of them we'll see where 2021 takes us with that journey but having said that as much as I want to spend less money on my hair not so much my hair because I feel like if that nice and easy had been the right colour I would be a I would be totally sure that that was the thing to do would be to stick with getting my hair done where I get it done but going maybe like every three months and doing my roots in between or whatever myself but I really realised during lockdown like I hate dealing with my body hair like I prefer just getting waxed Um, I hate shaving not into it at all and I also hate doing my own nails Um, I really like having my nails done but I hate doing them myself so as much as like looking at it on a sheet of paper I'm like there's too much money going to experiences and services lockdown also really taught me to value paying for other people's skills because I had 
literally no skills for painting my nails at all um, and I also have like awful like really weak short nails you guys can see so I eventually I had to soak my pre Christmas the last like gels that I got before we went into lockdown I've had to soak them off and like as soon as so if you look at this nail so if you look at this nail here that is the natural length of that nail that's not an extension or anything um, and all my nails were pretty much that length and now they are not because as soon as I've taken the gel off they've just all started breaking I am like really hard on my nails is like the conclusion I've come to I think I must be really hard on them when I'm typing and things like that because I still do break my nails even when I've got the gels on but nowhere near as much as I break them normally so I feel like I've really come to value just getting my nails done. In terms of cutting down the cost I think what I'm going to do is try and just get them like just done a bit more plainly rather than paying for nail art every single time because particularly in the run up to Christmas when I was doing nail art it was costing me £60 a time to get my nails done which I, I did, I loved having them done like that but yeah maybe like I'll still let myself do that like maybe for my birthday or a holiday or Christmas or whatever but I feel like maybe in between I'm gonna try and just have like more simple designs or like plain nails or whatever to try and keep the the cost down of the actual nail art but it is something I want to continue doing is getting my nails done but I'd actually I'd rather pay to get my nails done than keep paying to get my hair done the, the hair is the thing that I'm like if I could colour my hair myself I would literally never go to the hairdresser like I hate getting my hair cut I get I only got my hair cut once last year and like I'm perfectly happy with it I feel like any hairdressers that follow me are probably like no don't tell people that I'm sure it's I'm sure there's split ends and whatever but to me it looks absolutely fine and to be honest like I think that's one of the things I've taken from 2020 is a once a year haircut and it was February 2020 I got my hair cut in um, so it's not been cut since then I don't no I'm pretty sure it's not been cut since then and yeah perfectly happy so I feel like I'm not gonna get my hair cut any more than like once a year going forward but if I could colour it myself I would literally never spend the money on the hairdresser again it's literally the colour because I just my hair's all one length like it's I don't get a really fancy cut there's no layers I don't have a fringe literally my cut is like take the dead ends off and I would be perfectly happy to just go anywhere basically once a year to get the ends off if I could maintain the colour myself whereas my nails I can't maintain myself not that I can maintain my colour myself but I feel like I have enough skill that if I could get the right colour I could do that whereas my nails like I don't have the skills and I have rubbish nails um, and I can't get, I looked at buying, so it's the gel bottle ink that my manicurist uses and I, I went on to their website to see if I could buy their strengthener instead of using my own strengthener while, while we're in lockdown but you need to have like, you need to have a nail technician qualification to be able to buy from them so I can't get the products basically so it's not like I can get the product and use it myself to get the same result it's like I need to go get my nails done. I feel like we're going on a tangent here. Um, but yeah, basically in terms of experiences and services, waxing I'm happy to keep paying for. My nails I'm happy to keep paying for, but my hair is still the point of contention in terms of how my money has been spent. That pretty much is everything I've learned from budgeting is I know I want to spend less on my hair, but I feel like, as I said, the other categories have been so impacted by my ability to spend in them that I can't say I've got a good grip on them yet so it is what it is. Now in terms of other spending that I tracked through the year I did track how much I spent on replacements so replacements didn't need to come from my budget but I knew from the start of the year I wanted to start keeping an eye on how much my replacements were actually costing me particularly because I am not at a point where I'm having to replace things regularly so I know that what my replacements cost me last year is really only going to increase and that has been sort of impacted even further and that so this is all replacements beauty like 
any clothing that needed replaced, any accessories, homeware, anything that needed replaced counts out of this. And my entire replacement spend for the year was £1,197.82. Now the majority of that was beauty which was £577.88 and that was mainly replacing my foot peels which are like a one use, um, I've talked about them loads of times. Um, so I went through a few of them that I replaced. Uh, I replaced micellar water once, I replaced makeup remover once. Um, but it was mainly serums. That's mainly what I've got down to working through and needing to replace on a regular basis. So I know I'm not replacing the likes of when I work through my whole skincare stash. I would like to be at a point where I have like one cleanser that I use till it's finished and then I replace it. Even if I need to replace that every two to three months, that is like somewhere between four and six cleansers that I'm buying in a year whereas this year I've not had to buy any. Makeup remover I'm down to a point where I am replacing that now so I will see next year how many times I need to replace that over to get an average of how long a makeup remover lasts me. Moisturiser will be the same as cleanser when I eventually work through my stash. An average moisturiser lasts about three months so I'll need to replace that four times a year. Haven't replaced any moisturiser this year so I know that basically the longer I, so basically the longer this goes on, the more of my current stash I'm going to work through, I'm going to finish up, and the closer I'm going to get to being somebody who needs to replace all of their skincare steps on a fairly regular basis. So that basically means the cost of my beauty replacements is just gonna go like this over the next couple of years. And at the moment, 577 pounds and 88 pence is, not a particularly nice figure to think of in isolation when I'm like I've, I've bought skincare replacements and spent that much and that could have been like towards a handbag or something do you know what I mean like when I look at it as an isolated figure on its own I'm like oh that is so much money but I also know that it's just going to go up and then in terms of my wardrobe replacements I replaced underwear a pair of leggings and I had to get a waterproof coat and a pair of jeans which added up to £450.94. And, and again, I didn't go through clothing at the rate that I usually would last year because like I replaced my leggings once and I replaced my jeans once. Now, usually my thighs eat a pair of jeans every sort of six months or so, but I wasn't wearing them as much. And again, and I didn't replace any of my gym wear this year, which I thought I would have been doing. But again, the gyms were shut, so I wasn't doing the same classes as much as I was ma like maybe wearing my gym wear to go out a walk or whatever. Like I wasn't putting it through the same stress as I kind of usually would. So I feel like again, that figure is just going to go like that because under a normal year, I'm going to go through more things. So obviously there are certain things like the waterproof coat, for example, I would hope to get a couple of years out of. But yeah, like underwear, I wear every day. I'm going to wear it out. Leggings, they're going to get worn out really quickly. Jeans, if we go back to normal and I'm wearing them at the rate I would usually wear them at, I'll be going through them ever, like more often. So again, that figure is just going to increase. Accessories, I had to replace my purse which cost me £157. Totally fine with that because that is something that I'll expect to get a few years out of so that's not just going to go like that, that's going to kind of go like that basically and I'll replace it again in another two or three years when the time comes. And in terms of homeware I had to buy myself a new tumbler because I smashed like four glasses that I rotate between in the course of a year. That was just really bad luck though because I've definitely had all those glasses for ages so like that's I've never had to buy glasses before that was like the, the first time that's ever happened and that cost me £12. Um, but actually even just saying that in terms of like glasses I, I haven't had my eyes tested this year because of lockdown and I've, I actually should have definitely been tested because I was due in August but that was we'd been in lockdown for so long that I knew we'd come out and they'd have a backlog of people to test that they should have tested during lockdown so I've just been kind of patiently waiting for a letter telling me to go for my test but it definitely should have come by now but anyway that's a whole other thing but that again is something that I would usually have to replace every couple of years is my glasses to 
even if I kept the same friends to replace the prescription. So that's a replacement that I didn't make last year because of lockdown that usually would have been on this list. In terms of looking at that, £1,197.82 on replacements. It's one of those ones when I look at the replacements themselves individually, I think every single one of them has been worth it. But looking at that figure, I'm like, did I really need all those replacements? Or like, could I find a budget version of this and then like use that money towards a handbag? I am wary of saying that because it's, though, because it's so easy for me to say that when it when I'm looking at it in this mindset, when it's figures on a spreadsheet, rather than thinking about how I feel in the moment when I don't have that thing versus when I do replace it. Things like skincare, nice underwear, like things that you use on a daily basis do have more impact on your life than things like a nice handbag that you maybe wear once a week. So I do think my mindset maybe needs to shift a little bit there. But next year I'm doing something slightly different with my replacements and it might only be for a year um, because I might do the change next year that I've planned, well for 2021 that I've planned and figure out that I actually no, I completely disagree with what I've decided and I want to go back to treating my replacements the way I did in 2020. We'll just have to see. In terms of self-gifting, so I was under the rules of my no buy allowed to buy myself a Valentine's Day gift, a Christmas gift and a birthday gift. Um, and I did that, I got two pairs of shoes, I got shoes for Valentine's Day, shoes for my birthday and a handbag for Christmas. It was a Radley handbag though, not like a super expensive designer handbag, um, but I do absolutely love it, it's so cute. So all in all my self-gifting spend was £1,289 and I'm okay with that because I feel like the handbag was considerably, because it was a Radley bag, it was considerably less than it might have been had I bought something else that I was after. So I, I'm okay with that and I feel like I made really good choices around that and actually that self-gifting aspect of my project has really informed what I'm going to do in 2021. And then the last thing that I tracked was holiday spends. So obviously most of my holidays get cancelled in 2020. I went on one holiday through to Edinburgh for a couple of nights and spent £926 on holiday because I said that holidays were an exception to my no buy and I could spend what I liked while I was on holiday. Had I gone on the holidays that I had had planned to go on, that figure would have been much higher. Um, so I'm really glad I tracked that because I feel like I'll talk about this more when I do my Edinburgh haul video, but I bought a handbag and then I bought loads of little things and I feel like when I think back on Edinburgh, I'm like, oh, I bought my mulberry bag and I don't for I, I just forget about everything else that I spent. And the bag was on sale. Um, so the bag was, the bag cost me £697. So basically £700 of that was my handbag. That means there's £226 there that I don't even, like, looking at it now, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I bought that, 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 and that, cool. And there's nothing when I'm looking at the list of what I bought that I massively regret buying, but that's also £200 that I don't even remember spending in my head. So I'm really, really glad that I tracked that in Edinburgh, even though it was only like one like mini break, not even, I feel like holiday is not the right word for being like, I went to Edinburgh for, for a couple of nights um, when I live in Glasgow. But I am very, very glad that I tracked that because again, that has informed my 2021 plans. So to sum up, after a year of budgeting and tracking my spends, I'm so glad I did it. So glad because I feel like I've got so much kind of knowledge on what's worked and what's not worked in terms of starting my 2021 plans. But I do still feel that I need to be tracking things and be budgeting in 2021 in a very conscious, deliberate, um, slightly anal, arguably, way in terms of like, I'll still be doing my spreadsheets, I'll still be doing money diaries and sharing it with you guys. Set up has evolved, it's different next year as to what it was this year, but it's definitely, I've not done a year and thought, I've conquered budgeting, I've mastered that skill and I'm ready to leave, you know, the structure of it behind and be relaxed with myself next year about it, like I'm not there. I don't think I ever believed that I was going to do a year of budgeting and then feel like it was done. I did my first beauty no-buy year in 2018 
um, and I definitely went into that quite you know, idealistically thinking that I would do this one year and it would get so much moved out of my stash that my you know problematic spending would be completely kind of dealt with and it wouldn't be an issue anymore. That was not the case so I have never come off my beauty know why that continued through 2019 and obviously it evolved in 2020 where I did my entire no buy budget year um, across like beauty and home and fashion and basically most things I wasn't allowed to buy in 2020. I kind of knew from the journey I'd had with what I thought one year of a no buy was going to achieve versus what it did achieve. I knew that I wasn't going to do one year of budgeting and be like oh well that's it no need to think about this anymore but obviously the pandemic impacted my life and the way that I was spending money so much that I feel like I didn't learn anything like as much as I wanted to learn in 2020 not through an unwillingness on my part but just through the circumstances and I just obviously want to say that I am so aware that the fact that I have been mainly impacted by the pandemic thus far and the way that it's affected my budgeting plans for 2020 makes me super lucky because I you know we've lost friends of the family or like family members like my cousins have lost like their grandparents on like the other side and whatever but I have not lost anyone super directly related to me or anyone really close to me and I'm so so thankful for that so I don't want to come off as being like oh like Covid has really impacted my budgeting like obviously there is a much much bigger picture of the way that Covid has impacted but I'm just talking specifically about my budget here so um, I'm just wary of not wanting to come across like I'm complaining about such a kind of shallow impact of the pandemic on my life. But it is what it is, so I am discussing my budget and that has impacted my budget. 2021, like we're in it and started with a lockdown. So whether 2021 is going to be the year that I get the skills that I hope to get in 2020 or not, I don't know. We'll just need to wait and see, but I will be continuing to budget in 2021 and I will be sharing my money diaries with you. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this video. I don't want to ramble on too much more. Overall, I'm really glad I did my no buy budget year. It's not been the year I thought it would be. It's not been the year I envisioned, but it's still been super worthwhile doing. What I have learned this year has impacted how I've set up for 2021. So my next video will be me talking you through my plans for 2021, what my new project is. So I've already obviously told you that budgeting does continue, it's still part of my new project. Um, but my no buy has been replaced as well with a, a sort of restricted shopping reintroduction. Yeah, I hope you are looking forward to finding out what that is. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you in the next one with my new project intro. Very exciting. Bye.